Can you smell that? The galaxy just got a whole lot stinkier. Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to Stellaris. We are back today to take a look at the new Toxoid Species Pack. The idea behind these guys is you have a new class of species that survive on some sort of gas or liquid that other people would find poisonous, such as noxious fumes or radioactive sludge, or perhaps the Star Wars fandom. Regardless, they are as toxic as they come. And I'm specifically collaborating with Paradox for this video to come up with a species that will destroy as many worlds as possible. So with that goal in mind, I have created the Putrid Order of Nox. Now these guys are cool for a few different reasons, not the least of which is because we're taking advantage of one of the new origins in the game, the Knights of the Toxic God. Centuries ago, our homeworld was visited by a toxic entity. Sure, it destroyed half the planet, but the survivors did unify together in their reverence of that great being and founded an order of knights with the purpose of searching for their toxic god. This is going to give us access to a whole bunch of special jobs as well as a unique habitat at the beginning of the game. And then, most importantly, a very long quest chain with some rather interesting results. We'll also be taking advantage of one of the new civics in the game, Relentless Industrialists. This gives us a new building called a Coordinated Fulfillment Center, which greatly increases our alloy and consumer good production. However, over time, the horrible exploitation of the planet will turn it into a tomb world and destroy the environment entirely. So it's a bit of a risk, but we're gonna pair that up with Mastercraft where I get some artificers. The idea being that we are zealously exploiting every resource we can find and turning it into weapons and armor and equipment for our knights to aid in their search. You might also notice that we're playing as a corporation, and that might seem a little bit weird to you, but if you think about it, it makes sense. After all, it's called a company of knights for a reason. Lastly, there are some new traits available for the Toxoid species specifically, including inorganic breath, where you can produce some exotic gases at the cost of extra upkeep, or even noxious, where you pretty much survive by making everyone else miserable. But I'm going with the third new trait called incubators, which greatly increases our pop growth speed on small planets that don't have a lot of population. But as that population grows, it starts scaling back until this ultimately becomes a net negative. Plus the intelligent and adaptive should work out fairly nicely for me. Oh, and I should also show you the new ship set for the Toxoids. These things look freaking awesome. I love it. Anyway, let's go ahead and start up a new game and see how well we fare in our quest. And here we are on our home world, the Chosen of Nox. In a pretty decent location, I think. We're kind of tucked into a bit of a corner. Uh, I think we should be able to get a few nice little choke points and establish a pretty strong empire over here. All right. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is a special situation, the quest for the Toxic God. It takes a very, very long time to progress, and there are many, many stages to said quest with an unknown reward, which I'm looking forward to showing off. However, this comes with a pretty massive downside. In order to fund the quest for the Toxic Gods, it's gonna cost you a load of resources. This is gonna hamper your economy by a lot for, well, a very long time. Back in our homeworld, we have a very special habitat close to our homeworld. And this is unique for our origin because it employs knights with the Order Keep. We can take a look over here. We have a Lord Commander, some knights who will make progress on our quest. The more of these we have, the more progress we make. And squires, which boost up the effectiveness of these respective jobs. We'll be building this up over time. Don't you worry. In the meantime, let's go ahead and start off with our standard opening moves to boost up our science, and we will start exploring and looking for new worlds that we can colonize and, of course, exploit. Now, something I would normally do in order to save on some alloys and boost up my economy a little bit at the beginning of the game is simply strip down my Corvettes, but, uh, oh, would you look at this down here? It doesn't give me any alloys anymore. Well, that's a very tedious opening move that has been removed from the game. Oh, I should also point out our Coordinated Fulfillment Center. So the Metallurgists and our Artificers are going to increase their output by 20%, which is pretty substantial. It's going to reduce our pop growth by 20%, however. And of course, eventually, we're going to get a situation warning us that we're well on our way to becoming a tomb world. Every once in a while, our quest is going to result in some small rewards. Could be 100 alloys. In this case, it's a little bit of extra engineering research. As far as I can tell, this is completely random and not actually tied to any meaningful amount of progress. 
I'd also like to point out we have a unique policy for our knighthood, the knightly duties. Right now it's set up to questing knights, which is boosting up our survey speed and also getting us some extra anomaly discovery chance. And the quest in general is just benefiting and going a little bit faster as a result. If needed though, we can repurpose our knights to give us a bit of extra defense in our home territory, which makes us very good at turtling down, or we could try to boost up our diplomatic weight and have some extra envoys. Huh, I just noticed. Is this the soul system right next to my home world? Sure is. Huh, I wonder if there's uh, anyone living on Soul 3. Sure enough, there really is in the late medieval era. Huh. Hi, humans. Well, I'm looking forward to toxifying their world. Now, every once in a while, as you make progress in your quest, you're gonna get some pop-ups with stories about specific knights. In this case, Contrarian Doctrinaire. And there's a lot of flavor text in this. In fact, it's, it's so much that I can't possibly read it all in this video. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this is the longest event chain that Paradox has ever made in any of their games. It's honestly very impressive. Oop, okay, so we have a bit of a problem. On our capital world, we have been deteriorating the planet for a bit too long, and it's starting to reach a point of runaway ecological disaster. Leave things alone the way they are, and we actually will get even more benefits out of our coordinated fulfillment center, but we will definitely find ourselves on a tomb world, and that's, uh, well, probably not very desirable. We could launch a cleanup effort, which is good. I mean, it might actually slow things down, maybe even stop it and reverse the change, at least at some point, maybe, but it will increase my pop upkeep and building upkeep by a lot. So that's gonna be a bit unpleasant. Also, our coordinated fulfillment center will have a unity upkeep. Or we can embrace the change, which will allow us to learn how to safely turn worlds into tomb worlds, and then the penalty will be reduced and our corresponding terraforming options will be unlocked. Now, I did just recently unlock terraforming gases. However, it's an already inhabited planet. So I'm pretty sure that I can't terraform this right now, which means if we leave things the way they are, we got ourselves a little bit of a problem here, guys. A little bit of a problem. Could try the cleanup efforts. How bad do you think that's gonna be, though? The answer is it hits my economy pretty darn hard. Holy crud. We start using up a load of food and consumer goods, but we are reversing that damage. Now, if we let it get past level two all the way up here to irreversible cataclysm, well, at that point, you're locked into whatever approach you had chosen. So um, your planet would actually just straight out be dead. I'd like my capital to not become a tomb world if at all possible, because if it does, its habitability will go so low, we're gonna run into this kind of disaster anyway, probably. So this gives me a chance to at least reverse the damage a little and we can keep bouncing back and forth on approaches if we need to. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, the goal of this series was to destroy as many planets as possible. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, but not my own capital world, at least not yet, until I can figure out a better way to get out of that situation. I wanna destroy everyone else's worlds. Ah, oh, there we go, we have managed to restore my capital world, okay. So now we can change up our industrialism policy if we so desire. And it's now gonna cost me unity, unfortunately, to upkeep these coordinated fulfillment centers. That does sort of suck. I hate to waste my unity, but I'd like to not destroy my planets. Now, if you're worried that by making that decision, I just permanently locked myself up into a cleanup state, don't worry. Eventually, after like 10 years, people will totally forget that this even happened. Now, if we are gonna embrace the absolute destruction of pretty much every world I can get my hands on as we exploit it for resources, you know what make a lot of sense is to move toward the flesh's weak. If we can have a whole load of synthetics as our species, shedding our mortal form, ooh, well then, we can habitate those tomb worlds no problem. Ooh, here's something new. Okay, so toxic terraforming candidates. It used to be that if you found a little toxic planet like this one right over here, there was nothing you could do about it. It was like a magma planet, you know, just something you can have for like mining operations, but never something you could properly settle on. If you want to go for a new ascension perk called Detoxify, which I think is down here at the bottom, there it is, Detox. You'll be able to actually terraform these worlds. I think it's a little bit more, you know, complicated than usual, but it's an option. Personally though, I like the idea of having a toxified galaxy. I don't really want to clean that stuff up. I feel like we're probably ready to go into our first round of war. Not quite ready to destroy planets, but I do need more resources to fuel the quest. 
Now, these guys are a vassal of my much larger northern neighbor. Hopefully, this guy is going to leave me alone. I think we can go ahead and just attack this guy, and hopefully, we will smash him. Can't say the war is going tremendously well. I was able to take down all of the ports over here. Sure, that's great, but they've got some uh, much larger fleets running around, and I'm not quite strong enough to take all of this out on my own. Might be a good opportunity to go to our nightly duties and say, hey guys, if we're fighting in our own territory, which we will be pretty soon, I need a lot more fire rate, please and thank you. Here we go, here we go. This is the kind of trap that I was hoping to lead these guys into. I've tricked their army to coming toward my fortified station, so now I can jump on them with my forces. And this should be enough to break the back of a huge chunk of their military. All right, now this war is looking pretty good. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you need some extra resources while you are fighting these battles, there is a new policy down over here for scavenging. There it is, under debris. You can research it for their technology, which is the classic option, or you can scavenge it for some uh, extra resources, like some alloys, which I'm gonna go ahead and swap into. That way, you know, if you're fighting an enemy that is significantly weaker than you technologically, there's still some value in searching through the debris. If you have the scavenger trait, I'm pretty sure you can do both. Whoa, what just happened? Did these guys just have some sort of a little independence war just fire off at the same time? Certainly seems like they might have. Hi there, buddy. How are you? I don't like that you're a fanatic pacifist xenophobe. I'm gonna have to kill you. Well... There we go, that ends that war. And actually, because of the Independence War, this faction ceased to exist, which means all this territory is now back up for grabs. So cute that these little guys thought they were gonna be able to survive on their own. Haven't you ever heard? United you stand, divided you fall? Well, in this case, even United you were going to fall, but now you're falling even harder. Now that I finally united all these worlds before they tank my economy, let's go ahead and create a vassal. There we go. The League of Tirimot. Hegemonic Imperialists. Oh, is that what I am? Is that what you think I am? Okay, I see how it is. Uh, I don't think I was expecting this. Looks like we got some sort of a visitor from the Shroud? I have no idea if this is actually part of the quest or not. It certainly seems like it could be. One of my knights is apparently allowed to go in there. I mean, there's lots of, like, these and thous, so yes, this definitely seems like it's part of the quest for the Toxic God. All right, so enchanting Sisirus. What, what have you, what have you taught me? Oh, nothing good, apparently. Um, I now have actual memories of the Toxic God unleashing its <clears throat> gifts upon our world. Right, so all of a sudden, people are a little bit, uh, peeved. Uh, hmm, okay. So no matter what, I'm gonna reduce the motivation of my empire. Uh, would I rather have one knight, or would I rather have a monument that boosts up unity production and empire happiness? Probably that. Let's, let's just build a new monument. Let's pretend that this is a good thing, that the <clears throat> toxic god destroyed most of our world. I'm sure it's fine. And now I have access to the oh-so-glorious battleship. All right, galaxy, hear me roar. This is when everything changes. We're still slowly chipping away at that quest for the toxic god and making pretty decent progress. I'm trying to fund this the absolute best that I can, but it's still quite slow going. There are ways to speed this up just a little bit, though. One thing we could do is go to our little vassal subjects over here, and there is a special unique holding that we can construct. It is the Order's Commandery. This gives us an extra knight, and of course, extra knights means more progress in our glorious quest. It does reduce their loyalty a little bit, but like, come on, these guys can't stand up against me. Who cares what they think? What this means is, now that I actually have enough fleet power that I can start projecting myself all over the galaxy, we should probably go around and establish some mm, franchises, or perhaps we'd like to call them new chapters of our Holy Order of Knights. Basically though, I just wanted to subjugate the galaxy into lots of tiny pieces, and get myself as many of these knights as possible so we can speed up the quest. It's a lot easier said than done, though. In this particular game, it seems like half the galaxy is either a vassal or in a defensive pact, so I'm kind of stuck. Oh, here we go. This is a technology I've been waiting for. Tomb World Habitability plus 20%. It's actually 
probably totally unnecessary because I also just unlocked the technology I need to go for a full synthetic evolution. Which of course means that we are going to shed our mortal shells and embody true suits of armor. We will be the unstoppable immortal knights in search of our god. But there we go. So at that point, tomb worlds don't really matter all too much. Still, for those who are a little bit slow to catch up with our synthetic superiority, at least they'll have some tomb world habitability. But you all know what this means. It means it's time to resume the industrialism. Aha, we are officially a synthetic species, and we shall become the Ultranox Templar. Tremble in fear, galaxy. My power is finally awakening. Good lord. 60% on these things is just... That's just ludicrous. I mean, the thing is, I'm still not making a ridiculous amount of alloys because I'm tossing so many of them into the quest, but even so... Whoop! Haha! <laughs> there we go. Okay, after years of environmental damage, Gish has turned into a tomb world, and yet my habitability remains at a whopping 85%. So you know what? Yeah, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. I am absolutely okay with toxifying every world. Ooh, I think this might finally be the end of it. All right, Graceless met his fate at the hands of a dark wizard? Huh. We're hearing all sorts of little fun stories over here. All right, so characters wrote about the death of Knight Graceless Slash who helped create the order. Apparently though, he's actually back. We could handle this quietly or I could celebrate for 10,000 energy credits giving me a ton of unity and happiness. Sure, why not? Let's celebrate the return of our interdimensional knight. Ah, uh, hello, Squire Terrifying. What an incredible, terrifying name you have. Knight Graceless Slash would like to meet with thee. He stands ready to face our questions. All right, at long last, after well over a hundred years of searching, we're gonna finally get to know a bit about our toxic god. Sure enough, whoever this knight is, who I can't see for some reason, he absolutely has an idea where the god might be. Some sort of a mage used rock to craft, I guess, a prison around potentially the god itself. Prepare the knights! We must go and find our god! The seal has been discovered. But upon landing to find our god, we meet the trickster. Okay, somebody who is apparently looking to stop me. We can gain 61,000 unity for our vengeance, heck yes. We're actually literally fighting a battle against the gods of the Shroud right now, which is absolutely hilarious. Ah, oh, no, Graceless, no! But shall we open the door? Shall we conclude our quest? Frick me, what is this awesome place? Holy crud, this is where our toxic god is hanging out? I truly have no idea what we should be expecting here. After all this time, are we gonna find our toxic god as some sort of a great boss fight? A last enemy? I don't know, but my fleets are assembled and ready to move at my command. Off we launch. Let's see what happens. We are witnessing true divinity. Cosmalian is home to a swirling corrosive mist, and within them lurks the toxic entity that we have been searching for. A metallic maw, a chitinous carapace, tentacles and gas sacs. This spacefaring behemoth glows with a sickly green light. We are not welcome. The god is testing us. We shall summon the fleets. All right, well, let's see what this thing can actually do. I'm imagining this thing is gonna hurt like a lot, probably, but we are actually, oh, no, never mind. <clears throat> we crushed it, all right, that was easy enough, nice. The quest for the toxic god, we have overcome the trial and it lays at our mercy. The weird thing is, apparently this is not our true god, but possibly some sort of an offspring? Hmm, we can end the quest and take control of a colossus capable of toxifying worlds. Alternatively, we can say, in fact, this is no god. After all, maybe the quest must continue. Seriously, there is more to this quest? You've gotta be kidding me. I mean, let's be honest. I think we all know what the correct choice is going to be. A lot of knights are probably gonna be peeved and leave the order, but you know what? They've served their purpose. They just gave me a literal doomsday alien. Oh, yes. I have a colossus which with I can destroy the entire galaxy. This is beautiful. Who can I kill? Now, one thing that's a little disappointing about this toxic god is despite the fact that it qualifies as a colossus, it doesn't give me the total war castus belly, so I'm actually gonna have to go do some, like, uh, conquest wars. 
A little disappointing. Um, I would have liked to just literally point this uh, toxic gun at the head of the universe and say you will all bow before me or else I will kill you, but no, apparently I have to be more civilized than that. Now here's a perfect opportunity to test our new power. The capital world here is a little bit too strong in its garrison. I don't know why the AI really likes building fortresses these days, but they do. So tell you what, let's just toxify the world. Yes, yeah, so oh toxic god. Demonstrate your power! Oh man, this is actually kind of cool. You know, after a long quest chain like this, I feel like I'm actually being rewarded. It's awesome! Come on! Come on, make it rain! Oh! Wow, it's literally sludging the whole planet! <laughs> Valteren, everyone on there is dead! Oh no! <laughs> All right, I'm, I, I like my new toy. Yeah, now at this point, I'm literally just traveling across the other side of the galaxy. Who even cares? Declare total war using the Colossus I built, and let's just literally just drown the entire galaxy in sludge. It literally never, ever gets old, though. For real. Look how gorgeous that is. You're so beautiful. Oh, you poor pathetic fools. I'm sure you thought that your capital world was going to be safe from my toxic god, but... You're all wrong. Dead, dead, dead. Very, very dead. At this point, I think I've toxified something like 40 planets and Tomb World at another 20. But let's see if we can take this a little bit further. Did you really think I was gonna leave these consecrated Gaia worlds alone just because some fallen empire considers them holy? Absolutely not. Oh, oh dear. Oh, they did not like that. Mm-mm, not at all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a war in heaven. Seems like the perfect place for a toxic god, wouldn't you say? Well, these fallen empires still pack a punch. I mean, no one else in the galaxy can touch me. I have the power of god and toxic anime on my side, yet these fallen empires, they still kinda hurt, man. Doesn't really matter, though. At the end of the day, we can still crush these fools into the dirt. I'd be tempted to toxify their worlds, but they're just so good, you know? Yeah, we'll let them live for now. This should be fine. But don't you think for a minute that I'm not gonna turn their worlds into tomb worlds. I absolutely will. In fact, by the end of this, I expect half the galaxy is either gonna be some form of sludge ball or radioactive grave. A trail of infinite death and destruction, all in the name of our toxic god. Well, this has been a fun first venture into the Toxoid Species Pack. Knights of the Toxic God, guys. It is an extremely long quest line that takes dedication and a weakened economy for a long time, but once it starts paying out some benefits, oh boy, does it start paying out the benefits. As always, it's an absolute pleasure to collaborate with Paradox for this video. If you guys want to pick up Toxoids for yourself, it releases on September 20th, and you can find a link in the description down below. My name is Provis, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.